Okay, so in today's lecture, we are going to discuss about the three-phase AC synchronous generator. Synchronous generator means that this generator will generate three-phase voltages at a frequency that will be directly proportional to the mechanical speed of rotation of the rotor. The formula for this is Fe is equal to Nm P divided by 120. P is the number of magnetic poles on the rotor and Nm is the uh, speed of rotations is the number of uh, rotations per minute speed of the rotor. Now we know that uh, the three phase voltages typically are given by the formulas stated on the left hand side of the page where you can see that their amplitudes are equal but they are 120 degrees out of phase with each other. The typical setting that we need for generating this, these voltages in a synchronous generator is shown on the right hand side. You can see that we have named each one of the three uh, armature windings as A, A prime, the other one is B and B prime, the third one is C, C prime. And you can see that they are 120 degrees apart from each other. This design is basically responsible for generating these three uh, phase AC voltages in this generator. Now I'm going to draw a small table to show what parts go on the rotor and what parts on the stator. So I have rotor here and the stator. Since we are generating three phase voltages, we want to have three windings on the stator like this. Now I have not connected them in Y or Delta configuration, but you can imagine that they will be in an actual machine. And in order to generate the voltages in the stator, we need a magnetic field, a rotating magnetic field inside the machine. For that we are going to place, for now let's say we just have permanent magnets on the rotor permanent magnets so that the magnetic field on the rotor is pointing radially outwards and since these are permanent magnets we will have a constant magnetic field let me call it B. We know from the very simple relation of uh, electromagnetic induction in a conductor that is moving in the uh, in the influence of a magnetic field and that is E induced is equal to V cross B dot L. In this relation L is the length of the conductor, B is the strength of the magnetic field and V is the velocity with which this conductor moves. Now if you look at this, look at this design over here, then we have the length of the conductors fixed basically because the conductor in our case is the armature winding. So that was fixed at that point of design. The magnetic field we have made constant by use of permanent magnets. The only variable left for us to control the value of this induced voltage is the velocity with which this rotor rotates inside the armature. So we can say that in our case E induced is just directly proportional to the velocity. But you can imagine that in some cases changing the velocity only to control the value of this induced voltage will not be that easy. So in a more ideal situation we want to have a second degree of freedom as well in order to control this value of the induced voltage. Now we can see that the design is such that the length of the conductor has been fixed. So it is very very hard to change it at the, point, at the time of operation. So the other variable that is left for us to control is the magnetic field. And we have this idea that in case of an inductor, if there is a DC current I flowing through it, then it has a magnetic field B associated with it, which is given by mu naught n i. n is the number of turns on this coil and i is the current and you can see that this magnetic field is directly proportional to the current that flows through this inductor. So this means that if we use an inductor in place of these permanent magnets on the rotor then we can have a magnetic field that is an R control that we can simply control by controlling the value of the current. In the next video we will try to make this magnetic field dependent on the current so that we can have a more so that we can have a better control on the induced voltages on the armature windings